And I really love last episode that you guys touched on the family dynamic, because I think this is vital. Any topic when it comes to self-development, healing, freedom, truth, it definitely has a root in the family dynamic. This is where I see the structure is. Now, we have to be honest with ourselves and understand that the majority of people, the norm nowadays is in a co-parenting situation. So there's initiative, there's communication, there's all kinds of things. Um, even someone doing the shadow work as an adult should take that into consideration th that there is healing that needs to be done even with their own parents at whatever age they're at. And that is part of the deep shadow work of, you know, really diving into that, that deep psychology of the anima and animus, because as a child in the formative years, we're setting the template for male and female relations, right? The relationship that a daughter has with her fa father yeah. and son with, with um, his mother. I mean, this is going to set the tempo for, um, for relationships. So really important to kind of, even as an adult, when doing the shadow work, which is a constant um, um, journey, to take that in consideration and and pros uh, uh, pursue that, the healing within their own uh, family. Yeah, really good point, Will. Yeah, it brings up to a, a lot of points, that I, a few that I want to highlight. One is that there are skills involved in this healing work. And that skills that we're not typically taught as children, unless we're really lucky and have really aware, conscious parents, you know, who are very intentional and have done their work, you know, oftentimes we're whisked through life without a lot of emotional intelligence um, being consciously taught to us. So we're figuring it out as we go. And we're also being born into families where there's a lot of uh, ancestral trauma and we are the, you know, going to be interacting and, and learning from our own parents' imperfections and the level of their consciousness. So as we go forward and we talk about this shadow work, and what's hard about it is that our trauma creates the blind spots within us, and we don't see what we don't know is there. And I recently had a pretty profound kind of deepening of my own healing to become even more acutely aware of the childhood wound that I have been covering up throughout my, my life. And I'm seeing the very deep connections to that, that wound to the, the patterns of my relationships in my life and the chaos in of the relationships of my life. And, and I'm, so it's very profound, right? How, we don't know what we don't know, and yet we know there's stuff we don't know. And we have to, I think, consciously, intentionally turn to look and ask and seek for that which is unhealed through, you know, some self-reflection and also connecting that what's going on in our outside world and the dynamics that we're experiencing and the people that we're attracted to and we're attracting into our life is a reflection of the wound and the unhealed. So we're given information all the time for us to process and heal. But, but I, I think our lives are so fast paced that with that fast pace, we're, we're just operating um, automatically on, on autopilot. And we're not often taking the necessary time to do this work. So my big learning is the fast pace of life is a barrier. We need to take time, even if it's small doses every day, to look within, to be honest with ourselves. So the honesty within is first and foremost, and then equally important is the honesty with each other. And that may mean that, that, that we look and say, oh shit, like my decisions have, have created a train wreck and I didn't even know myself. And I made all these decisions that have had like implications in life. And, and, and like, here we are, what do we do? Trying to be loyal, but also realizing that maybe we weren't being loyal to ourselves. And so I think when we, we, we all need to say, okay, where are we now? Where am I now? And start from there with great honesty and develop um, a way of the skills to be able to communicate and interact with emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and sort it out. 
Hmm. Absolutely. It's beautiful, Leslie. Yeah, that, really that goes back to what you said earlier, right? I mean, the the agape, that's the love for truth. And it, it's interesting, if you probably did a survey out on the street and you had people, you know, prioritize, you know, give me the top five things in your life that's most important. Yourself is probably lower at the bottom, I think the majority of people will say. But if it's not at the top and in alignment with agape, with truth, you're not, you're not going to be a good father. You're not going to be a good mother or worker or driven or any of this stuff. So we need to, um, we need to focus on ourselves at all times. And I don't mean this in a, a self-centered way, right? Um, I think this is probably the problem with a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, the ego is dominant in the majority of people. I would say actually a lot of people have lack of ego. This is mm -hmm. what identifies with the collective. Mm -hmm. They don't have that individual um, essence where they're bettering themselves um, mm -hmm. from that, you know, that that POV vision. Like they're not they're not constantly looking at their own actions, their own internal ecology and dissecting that uh, the, the bird's eye view of their their daily actions and habits. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it, there's a lot of spiritual immaturity and i agree with you logan everything is spiritual mm -hmm. um so that's the animist perspective for sure mm 